Uh, today I'd like to share our experience uh, in usage of uh, WSO2 solutions for integrating, for creation of integration platform, state-to-state -state integration platform. Uh, first, let me speak a few words about who we are. Croc is a one of the largest system integrators in Russia. We are performing, I think, about 2,000 or more than 2,000 projects each year, and, and so on and so on. Uh, one of our largest uh, customers last year was uh, Eurasian Economic Union. I guess not so many of you have ever heard about this union, but still it exists, and it's quite big. Uh, uh, at the moment, uh, this union uh, consists of four states. It's Russia, it's Belarus, Kazakhstan, and Armenia. And Kyrgyzstan is going to join uh, this union in a few months. Um, it uh, uh, it has about, I think, one, 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 about two, 200 million of inhabitants. It uh, uh, occupies like 20 million square kilometers and so on and so on. Um, it's quite big, uh, it has quite big um, uh, federal authorities, like uh, 3,300 uh, uh, governmental agencies in each country, and it's, it's rather big. Uh, main goals of this union was, uh, first of all, free movement of, of everything, uh, goods, uh, people, finance, services, uh, uh, it was um, created to uh, create a union, a united economic um, space and to provide um, coordinated and uh, single policy, single economic policy between the countries to, um, to motivate them for uh, cooperation, for uh, stable development and to um, create single economic union and single custom union. Um, I think you, all, all of you know that uh, such goals requires a lot of state-to-state um, -state interaction, a lot of state-to-state -state data interchange. So that's why uh, last year a uh, project of creation of integrated system creation was started. Uh, integrated systems, it's a set of um, information systems and common infrastructure between the states uh, to provide uh, data interchange, to provide execution of shared, shared business processes between, uh, between countries, uh, to create and to uh, provide access to shared data, shared information, uh, to create uh, cross-border trust domain, and so on and so on. Uh, just a few notes for you to understand what, what was the challenges of this project. First of all, there was a lot, there were a lot of uh, participants, ministries, agencies, uh, local system integrators, um, software developers, a lot of people and, and a lot of companies. Uh, every country in this union has its own legal requirements, has its own cryptography requirements, and uh, uh, we have to deal with these all um, sometimes quite different requirements and to, we have to, we had to put it on together. Uh, add to this uh, different readiness and uh, zoo of technologies and vendors and you will now understand what was the project like. Uh, how did we deal with these um, challenges? We decided to move in four directions. Uh, first of all, standards. Shared common standards as a base of um, interoperability in the is base of compliance between of parts of system. Uh, on top of standards, uh, technological regulations, that's a rules, that's a rules that uh, allows every participants to understand each other and to interoperate with each other. Uh, next methodology, uh, it's everything about business processes, data modeling and so on. And on top of this, uh, technological platform, which is support, uh, which supports all these things together. Let's start these common standards. Uh, first step in our project was creation of uh, standards handbook. Uh, it was a set of uh, 
national and international standards in networking, data modeling, software development, and so on and so on, which was recommended for every state uh, to be uh, to be basis for interoperability and for compliant uh, consistency and compatibility bet between uh, states. On top of these standards, we created um, technological regulations. These were uh, documents uh, which uh, describe how to perform uh, uh, data interchange, what, uh, what are other actors, what are their responsibility, how did we use digital signature in cross-border interchange, how did we, uh, how do we uh, trust each other, how do we um, deal with problems, and so on and so on. These technolo uh, technological regulations is um, as a base for, um, for common uh, software platform and for common uh, data interchange rule. Next thing is metho methodology. Uh, this, this is all about um, business process modeling, about business uh, data modeling, about uh, data structures and so on. Um, not to reinvent the wheel, we decided to use international and national standards and rec recommendations such as uh, ISO recommendations or uh, World Customer Customs Organization. Uh, we have created a unified data, data model, uh, which was uh, which described all business entities uh, in customs, in finance, in uh, legal and uh, human resources, and so on and so on. And this unified data model was used as a base for creation electronic documents, paper-based documents, and uh, so on and so on. Uh, we. I tried, we, we have tried to achieve maximum uh, data structure reusability, maximum semantic independence, uh, just to, uh, to be more flexible and more um, manageable, to have a more manageable uh, data model. Technological platform. Uh, technological platform was, ba was built as a federated, uh, was built as federated architecture which consisted of uh, national segments. Uh, in every country, there are their own uh, information systems, uh, interchange infrastructure, and so on and so on. Uh, integration segment, it was a core of system which uh, comprised um, um, different subsystems like uh, portal, MDM solution, uh, analytics, uh, security monitoring, and so on. Uh, in each segment, uh, there are trusted third-party services, which this is uh, uh, special services th uh, that uh, checks uh, digital signatures and uh, uh, guarantee that uh, the signature placed on this document is legal and can be used for cross-border uh, and data interchange and uh, um, just to assure uh, every uh, participant of data interchange that, and that uh, this data and this document is correct and uh, was not modified. And all of these segments was uh, uh, connected to this uh, integration platform. And I'd like to tell in more details about integration platform. Integration platform had a federal, federal architecture. It, cons it consists of uh, um, integration gateways, uh, each segment, uh, national segment and integration segment has its own gateway. Uh, it ha it uh, includes uh, data synchronization subsystem for data interchange between uh, subsystem and integration segment. And all of these components were, uh, is uh, uh, united by messaging middleware just to ensure guaranteed delivery, assured delivery, and to achieve more uh, robustness and more, uh, to be more guaranteed. Uh, to achieve uh, more flexibility and more, uh, and to, get, uh, to give uh, states 
a basis for creation their own national uh, integration gateways, we have created a so-called model integration gateway. It was a set of uh, typical uh, integration components uh, based on WSO2 solution, uh, and uh, states could use uh, these integration components just to implement their own gateway to connect their infrastructure to an integrated platform and so on. Why did we choose WSO2? First of all, it was absolutely uh, suitable and uh, absolutely compliable with uh, customer key requirements. It has low TCO, it, has, um, it, it doesn't have any uh, vendor lock-in or platform lock-in, it has great uh, performance and so on and so on. And we, we had an experience, previous experience in WSO2 solutions, and we knew that we can trust this solution and we can use it for our, our project. What was the architecture of uh, model integration gateway? Uh, gateway core, based on uh, WSO2 USB platform. Uh, it consisted um, integration and routing logic. It consists, uh, include um, validation and error handling um, components, some monitoring tools, and so on. Uh, Logging and audit database uh, stores all of information about um, gateway operations, about errors, about some um, critical situations and non-critical situations. Administrative user interface allows um, administrators to perform uh, some um, configuration tools to perform uh, to work with uh, logs, gateway logs, with uh, gateway settings, and so on. Uh, messaging provided uh, guaranteed delivery, and connectivity allows uh, to allows uh, connecting some new information system in uh, in national segments to our gateway. What are the key features of uh, this model integration gateway? It's fully configurable. It doesn't require any coding to implement new business process or implement new interaction. Uh, it uh, performs end-to-end -end audit and uh, some kind of operational reporting just to know where is my message, what is the problem, how can I solve this problem, and so on. Uh, we, used, uh, we have used uh, asynchronous approach in our gateway just to uh, make it fast and reliable and to achieve desired performance. Um, now it's uh, performance for this gateway is about 100 or 150 transactions per second. That's um, not so much for some, uh, I don't know, for some integration platform, but um, still it's quite enough for, for the customer. It was deployed as a, um, Cluster-based solution uh, is a failover solution. Uh, it uh, consists of three separated, uh, three separate uh, group of servers. It's uh, core servers, database, and application servers. All of these servers are connected to monitoring console and to operational reporting, just to um, manage it, monitor it, and to understand what what uh, what is happening in each moment of time. Uh, what we are going to do next in this year and in next year, we are going to uh, provide API services for uh, G2 governance to business or governance to citizens uh, operations. We are going to provide uh, open data services and we are now thinking about event processing for um, for more manageability and for um, business activity monitoring and for understanding better what is happening in, uh, in our integrated solution, in our integration platform. Um, just to sum up my presentation, I'd like to tell one more, st one, one more time that uh, any large integration projects with a lot of uh, participants 
uh, really requires um, methodology and standards just to be sure that your system will be consistent at the end of your project. Um, you need to always think about reliability, about uh, f uh, reusability of your services, uh, just to not to make uh, the same thing again and again. And I think uh, you can be sure that you can use WSO2 solutions in, uh, in projects of any size. And uh, it can um, integrate even, um, even countries like it was in our project. It, it integrated five countries and uh, it performs quite well at the moment. Thank you for your attention.